Hi folks, Talene here, Lady Jane Quilting. Welcome. Um, I had several requests for a video showing how I do my basket weave. Now, this one is a real brain racker, stretcher, fryer, call it what you want. Uh, my dear friend Mary Beth showed me how to do this and I couldn't get my head around how to do a basket weave. So, not long ago, I had to do a class on my, or I was developing my grids, advanced grids class. And this was one of the, the designs that I wanted to put in there. Um, a lot of people ask how to do it and I needed to figure it out. So I closed myself in, in my studio and said to myself, Talian, you will figure out a way to do this basket weave that has minimal stops and starts. Minimal overstitching on the long straight sections because that's where it's so noticeable. And you will get it done. So I figured it out. And that's what I'm going to show you today in this, this video. Um, I hope it's not too long and boring. I'll try and keep it brief but clear so that you can see and understand the process I'm following. Now, I do advise that um, you either have a glass of wine to relax even though it's very early in South Africa for that. Or um, just try and, try and focus. Um, slow down and get your mind together. Forget about what's happening at home and what the kids are doing and, 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 and do a mindful drawing when you figure out and practice your basket weave. And that's the other thing. I really do suggest you sit with a type of grid fab um, paper, sorry, or even draw yourself a grid on paper if you don't have something like these fabulous drafting pads from Handy Quilter, for instance, that we, we get in some of our goodie bags when we attend events like Academy. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I still sit with, with frogs in my throat from uh, winter bronchitis. Um, and practice your drawing, practice your design, draw, 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 until you are comfortable with the process that you need to follow. Okay, so basically this is what it looks like. And what we're aiming for is a basket weave lines that's weaving top and bottom, um, above and below each other. And we want to fill the in-between blocks so that the basket, the, the weave stands out. And we want to try and achieve that with a few stops and starts as possible. And also, like I said, avoiding overstitching on these long straight sections. So I work my basket weave on a grid, simple basic grid. Um, I use a grid stencil and the one I like the most is the half inch grid, just blocks. And then I can manipulate my basket weave according to those blocks and I can actually create basket weaves that has wider bands and narrow band combination and I can also do basket weave where the bands are double the width than the size of the flattened full block so you get a more chunky basket weave you also will see that I'm going to show you with a simple up and down Simple up, down, up, down, finger full. But you can also do your basket weave. And sorry, here you can see it a bit more pronounced. That's what we're aiming for, to flatten that in-between block. <clears throat> but you can also do it with something like a meander or a scribble. And I will have a little snippet for you coming up where I did some stitching on the lovely handy quilter Amara Um to stitch our two samples for you, one showing the up, down, up, down, left, rights, and one showing a scribble full. What I like about this one, and actually more specifically this one, is that because of the grid and I can manipulate my basket weave, over here I've doubled the size, or actually tripled, no, made it four times bigger <laughs> um, than I started with. So in other words, my band is one block wide, but my flattened area in between is four blocks, two by two. So you get a more spaced out grid. And then it also looks great if you do it with a narrow and a wide. And obviously this one is the same width as the fold block. So it's a more pronounced, chunky 
um, spacing. This would typically be if you are going to normally do it on a half inch spacing, this would take you to a one inch spacing for instance. Okay, and then at the bottom of the sheet here, I do have the sequence that I'm working with. I'm going to draw it for you now as well. And <clears throat> this image is what you can keep as a reference because it shows you the process as well, the steps where we start. We're going to start in number one. We're going to work our way down. I needed to just add an arrow down there. And then we're going to step two, fill the block. Then we're going to get to step three and we're going to go straight down to the far end of the filled block. Then we're going to fill the block, step five, go down, step six, fill the block, and so forth. So this might be a handy key for you to keep for reference if you get stuck, or just save the video. Okay, now that the dogs have finished barking, and I've had a sip of water for my frogs and my frat, let me show you how I draw this. So first of all, you need to determine the space that you're going to do this in. And, and just for practice sake, we're going to work with a simple square space. Obviously, you need to go and adapt this to the space that you want to quilt it in and lay your grid down. That's the first thing. Lay that grid down either with your uh, stencil and your pounce pad or your stencil and your fabric marker. Either a uh, preference of uh, fabric markers can be like the blue water soluble pen, your so line pencil trio pencil this is the one and you can see I use it a lot it's it's a bit um, not new anymore and um, it has the three colors of lead that you can use or something like the panda pencil that Helen Godden sells that's also fabulous for darker fabrics so right so I've placed a little tick mark in the blocks that I'm going to fill and this is the important bit you're going to start with a row and you're going to skip a block Fill a block, skip a block, fill a block, skip a block. And these tick marks are actually put on my fabric. And they're just as a guideline to remind me of when I need to fill and when not. I mean, you can you can make a little a line, anything, a little cross, anything that's going to remind you that that's the block that needs to be filled. And that's going to help you um, with direction when you stitch and um, assist with not stitching the wrong fill in the wrong space. So they're kind of like road markers. What is important to note though is that we do skip one, uh, full one, skip one, full one, do that entire row, then you skip a row and then you complete it in the next row again and they line up, the, the rows line up. So the full block sits underneath the top full block but it's skipped a block. So full, skip, full, skip, full, skip, carry on, skip a row and you carry on marking your full blocks out. Just a tick mark, it's all you need. And you will see the sequence runs the same way, whether you look at it um, horizontally or vertically. It's full skip, full skip, full skip. So there's always a blank line, an unfilled line in between the filled rows so that your basket weave can form. So we're not doing a, um, a checkerboard effect. So we're not going, where's where am I so I can get you in view so I'm not doing here and here and here and here because then you literally just get checkerboard you're not going to get a basket weave you need to have that row in between these two fold sections so you need to have that blank row in between so that's one of the the issues to remember okay now I'm going to start top left it's just the way my brain works and I'm going to first go down. I would recommend that you practice this in any direction so that you can do this in any direction. Uh, just like we do feathers and just like we do any type of fill, because we do this freehand, you need to be able to, to do this in any direction from your quilt, on your quilt, with your machine. And as you can hear, my tongue is knotting like crazy. That's the Afrikaans brain wanting to uh, kick in at times. Okay, so... I'm going to start my top left block, but I'm not going to start top left corner. I'm going to start the inside corner and I'm going to show you the fingers. So I'm going to do up and down, up and down first because I'm now going to do my row up and down. So that helps you to remember if you're going to move up and down with your rows, you're going to start with up and down fingers. If you decided you wanted to start horizontally, you're going to go horizontal fingers and it goes like this make sure that I don't have my hand in your 
um, blocking your view so I'm going to start in this corner and I'm just going to make fingers up and down and you can decide how dense you want it now here's the important bit you need to end in the top left corner so that you can have a straight line that goes to the other end of the next fold block we need to have that line that encompasses all three blocks so that we can form the basket weave and not have overstitching on these long bits okay so I'm filling 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 making sure I find my way back to the outside corner fill the block so now I already have two sides of my block closed up now I'm going to finger my way back and go all the way over to the other side of the new filled block I already have two sides enclosed with a straight line okay stitch your fingers all the way over fingers all the way over okay now this is kind of where my area ends I need to make sure that I have a piece of straight line that closes up that block so that I have a block that has a straight line on both sides already because essentially that's what it is our fold blocks ends up having a straight line enclosing them on all four sides without necessarily over stitching it to achieve that so I'm at the bottom of my section now I'm going to work in the ditch basically and I'm going to get to the opposite side of the next fold block and here's the thing the next row needs to be a mirror image of the first row so if this was row number one and this is row number two there's a mirror that sits right in the middle of that in between space okay that's your mirror you need to mirror the, the design and the layout that happens on that side so I have fingers that go up and down and my straight line because I'm mirroring what happens on that side my straight line is closest to the mirror so mirror of what happens there now I can make my fingers or and mirror what happens there so if this is my mirror that line is further away so this one needs to be further away so row two is the opposite of row one I hope you understand that I'm going to continue drawing and please send me a note a comment an email a whatsapp if you're not sure if I need to explain this again in some way okay I'm in my ditch travel now remember the blank space in the middle of the blank space imagine there's a mirror so I need to mirror whatever happens in that row so my fingers go up and down closest to the mirror further away from the mirror closest to the mirror further away okay I am going to put this in the oven and take out a completed pie. I'm going to speed up the video just to complete this section for you. Continue drawing and then we'll be back to normal routine. So we've done all our one direction bands and folds. Can you see that your weave is starting to emerge ever so slightly? You're starting to pick up the pronounced sections, especially where the straight lines are. Now we're going to, we have it here. Now we're going to work our way back in a horizontal manner. And that's going to close up our weave and finish it off. So if you look at this guy, where we're going to start. You can see our one band is coming down here and in order to complete it I need to close up this line right do you see that which means I need to close up 
this line. So this will help me to get my direction of the next row. So I'm, I ended here when I came back up. So I'm going to go horizontally now fingers which creates a almost like a grid filled block. Close up my line all the way to the end of the full block fingers. Same sequence as we had, different direction. Fingers, close up, fingers, fingers, close up, fingers. Now do one more row, all the way to the end, the other end of the fold block so that I can close up that side. Fingers, close her up, fingers, Close her up, fingers, and this is still a mirror. Do you see? Same, exact same method as we did in step one when we worked up and down. Imagine there's a mirror there. So if this line is closest to the mirror, then this side needs to be closest to the mirror. <clears throat> and there she closes up. And you see your weave starting to happen. So again, I'm going to just do a little bit faster video so that we can get through this whole section and you can just follow along. basket weave I just always will close this up if just this just floats in the air for instance I will just stitch all the way around and just close up those loose ends um, but those will typically sit in the ditch and they'll be closed up okay so <clears throat> when you draw you want to try and do mindful drawing so that you don't <laughs> overdraw the blocks like I've done there I'm just sitting in an awkward position to try and film for you around my camera and the tripod let me just recap, okay, the important bits is that when you lay out your grid, you have a filled block in every second block, skipped row, filled block, every second block, okay. Then the other important thing is, no matter in which direction you are working, your filled block needs to be filled and you need to be closing it up with your straight line including the block in other words <clears throat> you're not going to do that necessarily then go up to that side and then go down to close up your block because this edge of the block is then not closed up and that's when your over stitching will start to happen so you want to get to that corner so that you have your straight line and the straight line goes over to the opposite end of the next block to be filled that's important um, you might get away with it when you do the up down finger fill and I'll draw a quick meandering fill for you now and you'll see how important this is so that you can finger draw your fingers all the way over to the opposite end of the filled block that's the crucial bit so let's say you're doing a meander fill or a scribble we're just going to scribble so I start on the inside corner and I'm just going to scribble. I need to get to that corner, work my way there to get my straight line to the opposite side. And then I can fill, get to the opposite corner. Do you see that opposite corner? So that I can get my straight line to close up. So when you, when you move away from a filled block, two sides of that block should already have your straight line enclosure. Now I'm here. I'm going to do my scribble fill, aiming for that corner. Scribble fill, aim for that corner, close up that corner. All the way to the opposite end of the block that's going to get filled. Now I'm going to fill it and I'm aiming for that corner. Fill it, aim for that corner and now I can go down. If you don't do that, you are going to start with your fill. 
and you're going to say okay i need to be there so let me just go over i'm going to now just fill okay this is the block i need to fill i'm going to fill right that's the block i need to fill and what's happening here now is i'm not enclosed on two sides so you have to make sure that you close up if you have that one side closed you're going to fill aiming for the opposite corner so that you can then travel down and have that enclosure on both sides of the block. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm going to include in the, the next two clips, um, I'll show you when I've stitched these um, grids out. The first one is with the up, down, up, down. I've marked it on my fabric with pounce pad and a half inch grid. Um, and I stitched on a rusty orangey color cotton and I've used a beautiful superior threads variegate um, in a contrasting color just simply so that you can see clearly what um, what I did it looks obviously beautiful a basket weave if you go with a matching thread color but for video purposes that's difficult for you to see what I've done so I need to make sure that you understand what I'm stitching and I'm stitching it now I can't I can't pronounce this or I can't make enough emphasis around this. When you do a basket weave, you need to keep your bearings together. This is certainly not one of the easiest ones, but if you break it down into the two directions that you're going to do your fill, and it's just that same design repetition that happens, fill a block, skip a block, fill a block, skip a block, you will be fine. Give yourself the roadmaps, in other words, mark out the little dots on your blocks, the ones that should be filled so that you know where you're going and what you're doing. I hope this is helpful for those of you that has asked for it, um, and I hope you'll go and try it, and I hope that you will please tag me, post it to me, send it to me, so that we can see what you've done and show others. It's always great inspiration to show others what you've done. You might just spark or awaken something in somebody else. Righto girls and guys, have fun!